Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today I thought we could talk about some of the new perfumes at Sephora. Sephora has definitely in the past like year or so upped their perfume game in that they carry a lot more brands. They're bringing in, I feel like more indie brands, niche brands, that type of stuff. And I feel like they have quite a few new releases that have been launching on the site. Sometimes they're not easy to find in store, I can tell you that much at Sephora's, but I have smelled some of them, I have some of them, I have some that I haven't smelled and I kind of want to know what you think. So it's kind of a conversation. I'll let you know um, if I'm interested in some of these, if I bought them, why, if I have them, why, and if I'm not going to, and why. So I hope you guys will enjoy. And when I say new, I will clarify this. When I say new from Sephora, I'm really talking in the last like six-ish months, but there are quite a few new launches. So anyway, I hope you guys will enjoy. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna start off with the bottle I bought. Like, why make you wait? And that is, ding, 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 ding. I did it. I bought the YSL Black Opium Le Parfum, I believe is the, uh, flanker name for this one and I was so excited because this is black opium with lots of vanilla and I feel like that coffee comes out it's just yummy okay it's just so yummy I feel like so many people talk about black opium being this gourmand and I get it like the notes say that but I honestly just got lots of florals like there was a sweetness and kind of a, a yumminess that would come through but it had a lot of those floral notes and so to me it wasn't like a true like gourmand gourmand vanilla a little more yummy yummy thing you know what I'm saying and this this version I'm like okay I actually can smell some of that coffee coming through I can actually smell a lot of that vanilla this Sam says my husband he's like this smells like ice cream this smells like ice cream from like, he was saying McDonald's where it's like, it's just sweet and yummy. And you know, it's not necessarily like <laughs> the best for you, but it still tastes good. You know what I mean? Like it still hits. And uh, I agree. Like it does have kind of an ice cream note, something kind of syrupy or like mm, densely sweet in a way about it. And I feel like the coffee that's also in here kind of comes across a little syrupy as well. So I'm super into this. I love vanilla. You guys know that though. I don't think that this is like the most revolutionary perfume in my collection in that there are a lot of great vanillas. I have a lot of great vanillas, but I feel like for black opium, this feels like the black opium for me. Last year, I bought the mini of the uh, illicit green because I was so excited for the fig note. And I really just felt like this was black opium. <laughs> uh, slightly more fruity. I, I don't know. I don't get a ton of the fig to be honest in here. Oh yeah, so different. Oh, they're so different, you guys. Just definitely, I feel like I smell that jasmine a lot, which I like jasmine, but I just love how fruity this one is. Is. I love how vanilla this one is and uh, I feel like it's the flanker for me for sure So I wanted to get the big bottle of it. I don't know how long this will be around but I'm down with the trend of all of these uh, <laughs> Designer perfumes putting in a bunch of vanilla in their flankers like I'm down I cannot wait to smell which this will kind of segue me into the Valentino Donna Born in Roma intense I believe it is. I think that's what it is. Let me make sure it's not the lay parfum as well <laughs> Yes, it's the intense eau de parfum and I really want to smell that one This one also I believe has a bigger dose of a vanilla in it and I already love Donna Born in Roma or Born in Roma. <laughs> I think it's a really nice one. It already I feel like has a nice dose of vanilla in it so I really want to smell this one. If you guys have it let me know if you've smelled it or if you've bought it. Do you think it's worth it? Should I pick it up? I want to smell it in store but yeah it's been difficult. I haven't found it in any of the stores yet so hopefully soon I can smell that. You know with the designer perfumes I feel like I mean with perfumes in general I try not to blind buy just because you never know but it's one that has me tempted for sure. So let me know the new Donna Born in Roma is out the intense if it's good That is one definitely on my list to get my nose on the only other perfume that I have in full bottle form here This was actually sent to me from Skylar and this is peach fields now They already have I think a new perfume launched called lime sands Which I have a little sample of which I haven't even smelled yet So we'll smell it together right now, but peach fields. I've been testing out for a while now I really like this. I didn't know how I'd feel about it like seeing the notes on it I knew it was gonna be be a fresher peach a muskier peach and oh it's good this is really good this is like a fresh a fresh version of a peach ring or something like that like it gives me peach ring vibes like the first peach ring that you have not like the 18th <laughs> you know what I mean where it still tastes good and you're not like why am I eating these still it has that peachness but it's still really light and airy and then the florals that are in here also keep it really fresh 
I feel like this is a very feminine kind of girly perfume. It's nice and musky and lightweight. I think it's gonna be so good for spring and going into summer for hot weather. I really love this. I've been wearing it a ton and I feel like if you like something like Vallejo from Parfums de Marley, I'm not saying it's a dupe, okay? Don't get me wrong, they're different and I do think that they smell different but they are in the same vein. They are doing that musky peach with the floral and it's airy and it's kind of fresh and kind of clean smelling and so I think if you want something on a budget more than the Parfums de Marley, obviously. I would give this one a smell. This is definitely in my top from uh, Skylar. I would say it's in my top five and I like quite a few of their scents. I love uh, Vanilla Sky. I love Pink Canyon. That one's also really, really good. And I feel like if you're someone who likes Pink Canyon and you're down with something a little bit fruity and has a little bit of sweetness to it, but not too much by any means, it's not like overly sweet, I would check this one out for sure. I'm very happy with it. I think one of the reasons I really love this too is it does have those woody notes in the base and I think it just helps it kind of ground it and not go too floral even though it has those floral notes as well so really good I'm gonna leave it here on that one but um, I've really enjoyed it and now let's try lime sands together okay I pay for the monthly subscription box that Skylar does and for 2023 they're doing each month is kind of inspired by a different location and that's kind of the vibe and I believe this came with that that's how I got this sample card anyway <laughs> um, I think that I'll get sent this at some point but I feel like Skylar does send their stuff out a little bit late so let's see what it's like I'm gonna put it on my skin actually I know not what you're supposed to do but okay I don't know if I said this it's zesty fresh and breezy soak in the tropic sun as the sea breeze mists your skin lime white sandy shores it does have coconut okay I was like I'm getting coconut <laughs> I'm getting lime in the coconut baby and it is it's lime sea salt and coconut water that's exactly what it is like it is exactly that it's like Skylar's version uh, almost of like Virgin Island water like in that vein you know it's also like a less sharp Pacific lime from Atelier Cologne really nice really beautiful uh, I'm actually excited like if I do get sent this I am excited to wear it for summer because it is very much a summery beautiful beachy scent. It's almost though like a, a costume of a scent in a way. Like I would not wear this scent just probably every day, but this scent evokes such a vivid picture of like being on vacation, being on the beach, being by the water, being in a flowy sundress that I want to wear it for those occasions. You know what I mean? Like that's what it is, but maybe not every day when I'm not doing those things. But yeah, I'm excited actually for this one. I was surprised that they came out with one so soon after Peach Fields, but this one has me actually excited. I'd love to know, do you get the Skylar uh, scent club? boxes. Have you tried Lime Sands? What do you think? I am excited for the one coming up this month. I know I'm getting off track. We're not talking about Sephora perfumes. I am sorry, but I just got the email I think this morning. The one coming out I think for March is called Amber Dunes and the main notes, Moonlit Jasmine, Vanilla Orchid, and Amber. <laughs> yes, baby. I am so excited. So that one's good. I really liked last month. It was like lavender heavy. The first month of the year wasn't my favorite. It was a little more green but um, I'm excited and I should do a Skylar video soon, especially if I get Lime Sands, I'll have to do like a, an updated video, especially here on this channel. I don't think I've done any Skylar videos on this channel. Maybe I can do something with the Scent Club. So anyway, <laughs> let me know. Anything you wanna see, if you're interested in that, let me know. All right, that got us off track. Let's talk about a new perfume from Nest. Now, Nest has perfumes, but they also have perfume oils and this new one is in the perfume oil uh, category. So as soon as I heard of this, Balinese Coconut, I was so excited. I do love a coconut scent. And I got this little point perk sample. I was so excited to get to try this for free. The Nest perfume oils can be kind of expensive. They're like at the 90, like almost $100 price point. And so I definitely didn't want to, again, blind buy Balinese coconut. I was like, I just don't know if I can do it, especially because for oils, like I think that they're great. And this one I have here uh, from Nest is the Madagascar vanilla. I got this in one of the perfume samplers. It was like the one I chose. And I do love this scent. This is a very tropical vanilla. It's warm and sensual. I feel like there's like some amber maybe in here too, because I'm, I'm getting a little bit of that, but really beautiful, really nice and warm and cozy, uh, but still good for hot weather but I think of this as like a beautiful tropical night. Oh, stop it. Anyway, I was excited to see how Balinese coconut would compare because that vanilla has, again, that tropical twist on it. it has a little bit of that coconut and this is definitely more coconutty. Mm, 
it's beautiful. It really is. I feel like you get a little bit of greenness, a little bit of sharpness. There might even be some lime or some type of citrus in this with a little bit of that woods. Ah, really beautiful, really beautiful sea breeze. I definitely get that kind of saltiness maybe even in here while there's still a slight creaminess. And when I smell this, I'm like, I know I've smelled this before. And I think what I'm thinking of is a scent from Summer Fridays. They did a rollerball set of perfumes like last year, maybe two years ago at this point. And there is one called Soft Vanilla in there. And although this doesn't smell like it initially, like that perfume, once I put it on, it has like a creaminess of vanilla. There's something kind of custardy going on. Um, but in the dry down, I do feel like there's some crossover there. I think that's what's happening. But if you know what this smells like, if you're like, no, Balinese coconut smells exactly like X, please tell me, because that might jog my memory as well. It's really beautiful. I like this as a coconut scent. I love that it's not too sunscreeny. It's not too floral, but it's also not too sickly sweet. It doesn't go too like kind of juvenile pina colada. It's just nice. Again, another one that's just like overtly tropical, overtly like vacation to me. So I love the scent. I don't think I'll be picking this up just like going out and buying the full size of the uh, oil just for the price point and the amount of oils that I tend to use. And also, I mean, this little sample size is probably perfect to have, but I do think it's really nice and it's a good coconut scent. It's a really great coconut scent. If you love coconut, definitely give that one a try, especially if you are down with some perfume oils. All right, let's talk about a sample I was really excited to get because I could not find this in store and I really wanted to. And this is from Clean Reserve. They came out with a new scent called Sparkling Sugar. Okay, you probably already know I was really excited because sparkling sugar sounds delicious and yummy and like yeah I'm really excited for it and unfortunately I don't really love I don't really love this one it's fine it's very much in the clean reserve kind of um universe like it's their house DNA for sure but off of first impressions I literally was like is this radiant nectar like wait is this radiant nectar and it's not it's not radiant nectar this has notes of peach but it has that muskiness it has that slight sweetness in it there's a little bit of tang and to me it just smells like the musk musky pear sweetness that's coming from Radiant Nectar. Now when you smell these together, they do smell different and you can get those differences. But to me, I just felt like you have a perfume doing this, like you have a perfume doing <laughs> doing this to me and I was just excited for maybe uh, more of a take on that sugar. I don't know, I didn't know where it was gonna go. You know, the name had me excited and unfortunately I'm not gonna be picking this one up and I really was hoping that I'd like it enough to do that but I don't really like it enough for that. And I think honestly, if you have Radiant Nectar, that one's pretty good. If you have Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit, I know none of these notes are matching up but they still kind of just remind me. So Sunfruit I feel like is a stronger, maybe a little more tangy, a little more fruity version of this and I also feel like uh, the Oris 22 or 22 Oris from the Letta perfume brand. Also kind of in that same vein. It's like musky, a little tangy, a little sweet, a little um, tart almost. This one's maybe the low key version of those two, the Ellis Brooklyn and the 22 Auras. But um, yeah, not my favorite, not something that different or unique and a lot different when I smelled it than I thought I was gonna get. So that is gonna be a no for me, unfortunately. All right, a really brand, brand, brand new scent. I have not smelled this yet, so I am excited to. This is the Seven Virtues Coconut Sun. It's only been up on Sephora for a couple of days now, but this has notes of coconut, frangipani, and vanilla. I'm assuming this is going to be a very like kind of that sunscreen kind of scent. I'm interested to smell it though. I don't have any bottles from the Seven Virtues. Vanilla Woods is a scent that I do like, but the pear note in it just makes it a little bit more fruity than I want it to go. But we're not talking about Vanilla Woods. This one I'm excited to smell. I mean, we're getting into spring, summer, and those tropical fruitier scents are definitely coming out. So that one's on my list to smell for sure. Another one I'm kind of surprised I want to smell. This one is the Fame scent from Paco Rabanne and this is more tropical. So it has notes of mango, jasmine, and vanilla in it. And I definitely want to get my hands on it and smell it. I have a couple of mango dominant perfumes in my collection. I have Mango Skin from Wilhelm. I also have, I think it's Sertal Cruz too from Zerzhov, which is like very milky kind of creamy creamy mango, kind of like a green mango. It smells like a grocery store. Honestly, to me, it's like a creamy grape stem. Like that's kind of the vibe from it. It's very vegetal um, and green in that way, like fruit green, but also kind of milky. It's a unique moment. <laughs> 
it's a unique moment for sure but i want to smell this one and i'd love to know if you've tried this one if you like it the bottle is definitely a moment that's a very paco Rabanne thing to have a, a pretty flashy bottle and this one looks like a little cool robot with some glasses on okay i'm not sure i love the bottle but you know but i applaud the uniqueness you know what i mean what are some new ones i've actually smelled i don't have these ones with me but the new one from killian can't stop loving you i can't stop getting it out of my head i smelled this in store not at a sephora but i smelled it in a i think it was Neiman Marcus and it smells really good. It's a very like orange blossom heavy kind of sugary. I think it's honey in there but I didn't really pick up on it smelling honey to me anyway because I don't really love that kind of animalic honey like I don't like bee by Alice Brooklyn. I don't like bee from zoologist either. That one is ooh -hoo -hoo. that one's a little too intense for me so I don't like when honey gets a little too much like an actual like honey. I don't even like the taste of honey really so anyway that one just was so sweet and nice. I'm definitely on the kind of like neroli orange blossom stinky white floral train right now. <laughs> the white florals of my nightmares are now the white florals of my dreams for some reason um, if they're paired with enough sweetness and so this one is really like in that sweet spot for me, okay? In the sweet spot, um, I do feel like it's a little bit less, uh, just kind of in general, like when I can, if I'm trying to remember it, it's been a second since I've smelled it, but I do think it's different than Love Don't Be Shy in that to me, Love Don't Be Shy is just so sugary sweet. This one to me is just more mellow in general with all of it, you know what I mean? So kind of similar profiles. I don't have them next to me to compare, but definitely on my list. I don't know if I'm gonna pick it up. If I do, it'll either be during the Sephora VIB sale, whenever that comes for spring, or I'll get it from Selfridges so I can save some money. But I want to smell it and really spray it on me and, and really know it because obviously it's a, a chunk of change for sure. Another one I've smelled and I am not going to pick up because I actually have something that I feel like is similar enough, at least again from first spray and first smell. And that's from Fleur. The new scent, I think the newest scent, I don't know, they've been coming out with so many, but Tangerine Boy. It's a very citrus heavy, kind of fresh, spicy kind of scent. Very tangy, very like bright and energetic, like zingy, I guess, is how I would describe that. Really good for, I think, hot weather. But I feel like for me, uh, my answer to that in my own collection is Bitter Mandarin from Jo Malone. This came out last year. I think this might have a little bit more of a cologne touch to it, but Fleur does that kind of unisex stuff too. So mm, yeah, this has like almost like a citrus peel oil, like that spritz you see in the air. That's what this kind of smells like. Very much like an Aperol spritz kind of moment, yet there's still something kind of sexy about it. It's really good. And I just feel like if I am wanting something like that, I'm gonna reach for a bitter mandarin, I feel like in my collection. But if you're looking for something super, super citrusy like that, maybe is one to check out. I really have enjoyed from their more recent launches. It's not like super recent, but Somebody Wood, I think it's called. Yeah, it's called Somebody Wood. And this one has some woody notes. Uh, it has has some amber, has some cedar, has some saffron in it. And I really like this one. It's a nice like skin scent. It reminds me of Sweet Whiskey from Bath and Body Works. If you like that scent, I feel like they would pair so perfectly together, but that is probably the next Fleur scent that I would wanna pick up. All right, what else? There's a new one from Boy Smells. It's called, I think, Less, L-E-S. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Le. This is described as like a floral heavy perfume. So it has pomelo, peony, and moss. I definitely wanna smell it. I have a, a couple of boy smells in my collection. I really like Marble Fruit, probably my favorite one. And it's just a brand I like to keep up on. Like I wanna <laughs> smell their stuff. I also really love their rhubarb smoke candle, so good. And I really wanna get the Italian Kush candle for summer. It's like kinda has that little bit of green, you know, cannabis smell with a lot of citrus. Really nice, really refreshing. But this new perfume is one I definitely want to get my nose on. It's not one that I think, just based off of notes initially, that I think is gonna be my favorite, but you never know, you know. You never know what's gonna hit when. So I definitely wanna get my nose on that. I will give you a little bit of a review of the Woodphoria. This came out, I wanna say like at the end of 2022. I just have a little decant here. And this one's pretty good. It's that one of those like really light, kind of airy, kind of molecular smells. I was drawn in by the notes on this one. It's musky, it has fig, it has coconut, it has sandalwood. There's cedar and jasmine. Like, yes, those all sound good. This has something a little bit almost animalic. I think it's actually just spicy smelling, but 
um, that comes off almost a little stinky to me, but it is very lightweight. It reminds me of like a uh, Floral Street Arizona Bloom, kind of in that vein for sure. Maybe a little bit more powdery on this one, um, but it's good. It's just not one. I, I don't know if I'm gonna go for the full bottle on it just because I have some similar stuff in my collection, but I do like these types of scents. I do. I'm like such a sucker for fig, coconut, and woody notes. Like, please stop it. Don't. Don't tempt me. Seriously, just stop it. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. There's a few more that I want to smell. I really want to smell Mason Margiela replica on a date, okay? I cannot find it anywhere in store. It's effing annoying. Honestly, at this point, so annoying. I just love the replica line, and so I am excited for anything that comes out, although I feel like the last few I haven't enjoyed. I didn't like when the rain stops, when the rain starts, whatever. I didn't really like that one, and I think this might be the next newest one, but I did like Autumn Vibes, so, you know, and I love By the Fireplace, you guys already know. So this has black currant, it has some rose in it, geranium, moss, there's some patchouli in the base, vetiver, musk. Like, I want to know what this smells like so badly. I love the idea of this being like an, a date perfume, like being on a date, they try to capture the smell of that. And so I wanna smell it. I've seen some reviews, so I'm not gonna blind, I refuse. I refuse to blind buy this. I don't even wanna buy a travel size of this. Like I'm like, no, I don't wanna spend 30 or 35, I think everything's gone up in price, on a freaking perfume. I don't know if I'm gonna like it, uh, especially with those notes. Like those are not typical notes for me, but man, do I wanna smell it. I wanna smell it so bad. I wish that any store would freaking actually have that to smell. Come on. Come on, guys. The last couple here, there are some new Tom Ford perfumes. I think at this point, it's kind of old news. The Cherry Smoke and Electric Cherry. These are flinkers for Lost Cherry, I believe it is, from Tom Ford. I don't have Lost Cherry, and I've only more recently been getting into cherry scents. I've tried the one from Navitus, the Venom of Love, as well as a couple other scents. They have a few different cherry scents. I've tried Sniff uh, Tart Deco. That one's pretty good. I like the Venom of Love as well. And then for a more cheap option, Option, the guest seductive red is also kind of cherry and so I've definitely been into the cherry scents and I could see myself at some point maybe wanting these but I did smell both electric cherry and cherry smoke in store I liked electric cherry enough to put it on my wrist but I did not like the way that it kind of wore on me it kind of turned I don't know just a little sharp and a little bit soapy in a way I was not expecting uh, based off of kind of the top notes and just how it opened so that kind of sucked I really wish that I had tried cherry smoke on my my skin because I still liked that one quite a bit and I think that I might like that one more in the dry down but I was never a lost cherry girl initially anyway so those are also just so expensive so it's kind of like easy to be like no I'm good <laughs> I'm good on those so I don't know I could almost see a future in which I like those a little bit more than I have in the past and even do currently so those are there I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on those did you pick those up do you like the Tom Ford DNA because I, I just it's hard me and Tom Ford perfumes just don't quite get on like I don't what it is. Okay, and last, I still can't seem to find these in store, even though so badly I want to smell them. And these are the Daisy Paradise line. So there's one for each of the different Daisy perfumes. So there's the Daisy Paradise, Daisy Oh So Fresh Paradise, and I believe Daisy Love Paradise. They have all of them. And I am just, uh, you know, very nostalgic for the Daisy DNA from Marc Jacobs. Daisy was my like perfume in high school like I loved it and I've been with my husband for a very long time since we were in high school so he's bought me that perfume multiple times and so he has like you know an affinity for it as well so I do want to get my nose on these but I've learned that I'm not just gonna like buy the flankers of the the daisy scents either just because they tend to be pretty similar and um you know the notes on these ones they're just like all slightly different I just want to smell them though I want to smell them in store so bad let me know though have you tried the daisy ones do you feel like there's one that's like different Enough, let me know. I want to know any of your thoughts though on any of these perfumes. I think my most tempting for what I don't have is the Killian one. Can't stop loving you. That one mm, has my little heart right now, but I'm holding off at least a little bit till I can get a nice wear on it. I really want to to know how it's gonna wear on me throughout multiple hours so that way there are no surprises if i decide to buy it you know what i mean but let me know what are you interested in i'm super pleasantly surprised with peachfield so happy i like this as much as i do and really glad i got my hands on the black opium which i did save some money buying this from selfridges that's what i do guys <laughs> i buy as many perfumes as i can depending from selfridges because they tend to just be cheaper over there i don't know what it is it's nice though um anyway 
I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> I know it's about Sephora and I'm over here saying Selfridges, but you guys get it. Save your money where you can, okay? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.